know, it's one thing to say how oh, well, we're looking at doctors at the minute, but let's talk about what's been the criteria for why Google has been as successful as these. And there's, there's many, many other things that are um, What's really important is that, that um, criteria such as of course, are being open source. And then, like, uh, uh, an incredible amount of features. I wonder if you're each of them, but another big um, one that is underestimated is figure on the highlight, and what is about the adoption of and the distribution of the to be a pretty big deal. The other one is, and it's a big one that many of the uh, custodians of the whole government digital programs want to talk about, is the last one that's got right there, and soon it's going to in that when adopting Drupal as an open source CMS and it adopted by many other major uh, agencies that a uh, public service government can use those skills and quickly um, pick up and contribute and be a value um, in other words if they move along. Right? So it's the, the skill that they learn with Drupal is transparent, which is, which is awesome. So now, I want to specifically uh, talk about Salton's journey and experience and relationship with Drupal. And what I've gone and done, I've taken a very brutal and honest perspective uh, for you to share with you. Um, and I've separated our journey between um, what is the Taker era and the Maker era. And the reason I've deliberately done that is to uh, one, uh, confess to uh, our early meetings on, uh, on where we started and how we are really continuing to take it to Drupal. But two, um, is to uh, also, um, I don't know what the right word is, so, so Bruce, um, a few years ago, wrote a very famous blog on the takers and makers of Drupal, where we talked about the flip of on the tension. And the between uh, the makers and the takers, and, and how attention creates this sustainable uh, community. And so, if we were to be uh, honest with ourselves, we have to reflect on and recognize that in the early years of our journey in Drupal, we were uh, takers. And so, to talk to you, um, for, um, for the share with your old son, to self a bit of uh, almost 20 years, 20 years next year. So pre-2010, we've done a whole bunch of things. So we've got an argument in uh, general, WordPress, Mambo, for those who will remember. Um, and it was around 2010 where we actually had a developer around to introduce us to this thing called Drupal. Um, and it was through that introduction of a developer where we ended up um, Doing our very first Drupal implementation for local government, um, a based on Drupal version 6. And so, um, and then it was shortly after when we started to understand the real power of Drupal and why it was better than other cities at that time. And the biggest point of difference for us was the very sophisticated content moderation I worked on capability that Drupal provided. Uh, in comparison to the other open source units at that time. And so um, that was where I was on them. What was interesting in the later, we started to see um, tenders and gifts explicitly prescribed Drupal in their in their approach to market. And so that was um, uh, interesting for us. And it was um, following that, we began to obviously respond to and uh, were awarded a whole bunch of Drupal to be able to deliver on a whole bunch of Drupal builds. And then shortly after that, in 2014, we made a significant investment in certifications and training, and we made a big explicit decision to invest explicitly or exclusively uh, in Drupal and drop all the other CDSs. And not only up to up until today, it's exclusively in Drupal and work for a spot of certification where a client might approach us uh, to, to do that. So that's a uh, and what was that actually through the take that era? And so now I go into the maker era, um, from 2015 to 2022. So, and this of course is where we start to play a role in 
contribute to that. You can do that. You can start to do light contribution, automate it, and a far more um, great contribution. So, 2015, we started to go to the events, sponsoring the events, um, doing a whole bunch of reporting with our group, uh, doing presentations at the events, sharing our experiences, doing a couple projects. And then um, in 2016 and, and there on, um, we went in and you know, invested um, hundreds of hours responding to government tenders, uh, positioning the group and educating the monitoring for the benefits of. Um, and then in 2016, we started to, uh, and until then, by the way, we had a really consistent feedback until 2016, um, where we started to do minor contributions to our monitors and patches. Um, and those are the new types of technical things that I've seen on my slide. Um, and then in 2016, which was a major turning point for us, where we started to uh, really deliver on major uh, large uh, programs that were going multi site, um, multi site portfolios with Drupal, of course, and successfully implementing them. And whilst that was really just very contribution to Drupal from a, from a code perspective, what it did do was um, provide great stories and great use cases for uh, implementation of which was, um, yeah, um, uh, it's a contribution to the crowd. And so I mean, from 2008, we then started to kind of contribute back to Google through the development, obviously, with our government partners through uh, monitoring, uh, contributing uh, modules um, and, and open source, of course. And then in 2019, we then started to contribute tools around the example I'll give there is an uh, open source tool called Merlin. For those that don't know what Merlin is, it's an open source uh, content moderation tool that essentially allows you to spread content from any sort of proprietary or CMS and uh, put it through getting a wrap up so that we're going to talk to you. Um, and then, um, uh, and then in the last uh, year to two, we've now devoted a team that is structuring other patients to continuously contribute to call our projects. And the most recent um, contribution is where I'm um, still referring to the day we start to do innovation around them. Um, and the example I give here is the composable uh, thing, which is, I won't talk to because that's the second part of this presentation. We'll get a little bit doing more of that. So Drupal in the future, so some of the things we're looking forward to, um, which is from you, or any existing time, I might just pick it up one or two here. So um, one of the things we're looking forward to is doing um, more shares and what and then in Drupal starting to support you to really contribute to Drupal, doing more headless implementations to be able to support um, that obviously result in more multi-channel digital experiences. It's either better or uh, yeah, um, and uh, the other one is around personalization. Obviously, it's the it's the next um, uh, evolution phase of Drupal. We're really excited to contribute to personalization um, to ultimately create better, more personalized experiences. Obviously, um, and I'll, I'll move on to the other two. Yeah, and so what what I wanted to leave off with and, and share is um, is uh, one of our biggest contributions to Drupal yet, which is what you're going to hear following me, is a, uh, a product which is called Civic Theme, um, which is an open source atomic design system with Drupal 10 for the theme. And the, what I wanted to, as the slide here represents, is this is the result of a whole lot of history, a whole lot of legacy, a whole lot of work, a whole lot of observed patterns uh, for us to identify an opportunity for us to um, provide a, a product, that, an, an open source product, that allows us to uh, create um, quality websites at, at rapid speed and um, yeah, time. And so, um, yes, I, that's my conclusion. And uh, I want to say uh, congratulations to Drupal uh, for releasing a, um, a 10 today, as well as a very big thank you and show of appreciation and gratitude for uh, Drupal and what it's um, meant to, to us and uh, our partners. Um, yeah, it's obviously a fantastic thing. And, and yeah, that concludes my uh, talk. Thank you. And I will now hand over to Alex. Over to you. Thanks.
pizza. It is better than that. So nice. We're gonna have another maybe 20 minutes, yeah? Yeah, we're trying to give it 20 minutes of talks and okay. more, more pizza and more beer, I guess. Um, yeah. 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 Everyone, just uh, help yourself. Um, yeah, just this is like informal, <laughs> right? I'm actually going to talk about technical side of Drupal 10. Going to fly through it very quickly. Uh, just for those of us who doesn't know what's coming, um, just going to wait 30 seconds. What's coming? Uh, well, actually, what's here? <laughs> well, that is here since yesterday. Uh, been quite a lot of uh, Drupal 10 go live parties across the world. No. Do you, can you hear me? Can you hear me okay there? Okay, cool. I don't want to use the microphone. So, uh, a little bit technical stuff. What is Drupal 10? Well, it's Drupal 9.4 minus deprecation. So, we are here with, it's not that many changes, but it's good. It's good because we're getting a more cleaner uh, code bases with all the duplicated APIs being removed. Um, practically what that means is uh, some of you who may have used um, code quality tools like PHP Stan may have seen that uh, when you use some functions or API of Drupal that if it's about to be duplicated would issue an error or a warning saying, hey, this will be duplicated in uh, 9.3, 9.4, or Drupal 10, and will be removed from the next version. So these are the ones that's been removed. Uh, I'm going to actually cover this uh, just a bit later about duplications. Um, new features. Oh, this is fancy. Uh, I'm going to fly through this. Uh, we've got um, Olivera coming as a default theme. For those of you who don't know, when you install Drupal 10, you'll see this uh, Olivera theme uh, replacing body. Uh, it's a long time overdue. Body itself is about two years old. Um, and Olivero is its new theme. Uh, you can use it as your base theme if you want. Uh, and it doesn't support IE uh, 11. Which is great. So um, Drupal 10 does not support AE11. Uh, it's uh, much easier to develop now. You have to deal with all that old technology. Claro, Claro, um, coming as administration theme by default, replacing seven. Seven now is a country module. Uh, sorry, country theme, and Claro is claimed to be a cleaner UI, uh, which I think it is. Uh, yeah, um, much modern, looks more, uh, modern uh, as a theme. So when you install Drupal 10 as an admin theme, that will be your default theme. Uh, one of the biggest 
Uh, one of the main reasons actually for this upgrade is CPA Editor 5 uh, upgrade uh, replacing CPA Editor 4. Uh, it's used for more modern editing tools, better authoring experience, but um, also security. So the uh, company that supports uh, and develops the editor, uh, they only, uh, I guess, support uh, the end support for CK editor uh, soon, and they ask everyone to upgrade to CK editor 5 because security support will not be for CK editor 4. Uh, now, there is a, a case we made to put a um, Decoupled, an example of a decoupled implementation of uh, functionality in Drupal 10 with names. It's a, it's a first kind of try uh, trial module that has been placed in the core um, to, to deal with decoupled out of the box. So the menu system is quite complex to deal with. And now with this module in Drupal 10, um, it can be worked with very easily much easier than what we had before in Drupal 9. Um, further improvements into layout builder and media functionality, I'm not actually going to pause on this because they are just kind of um, functional improvements there. You can check them out by uh, speeding up Drupal 10 side. Um, now, this one is one of the uh, major ones as well. Um, the starting with tools. What this is, is this is a, it's a development utility, uh, but um, you basically can start your new themes uh, by running one command uh, out of the box now. That command can create your new theme um, from existing ones. Moreover, as a developer, and basically as a developer of a theme like a Civic theme, for example, you can define your theme to be a base one for the static theme tools to pick it up as a, as a source. So now, basically, any contract theme uh, can be made a base theme very easily by declaring itself as a base theme and uh, allowing the society tools uh, to be uh, integrated with it. What that means, practically, is less time for uh, a brand new project. Uh, jQuery, yes. So. Doesn't die. It can't kill it. Uh, I don't know whether we should, but um, trying to remove jQuery from core uh, step by step. Um, this time, so it's not removed fully, but some of the functionality more uh, more pieces be removed. Uh, by the way, jQuery UI is already removed uh, from core uh, and replaced with uh, more than JavaScript components. And Last but not least, uh, System 6 is actually the second important uh, or second reason why we're doing all this uh, major upgrade. So, Symphony 6 replaces Symphony 4, and Symphony 4 is uh, EOL and security patches, I believe, end of this year. So, because of that, and Symphony, if you don't know, is the framework that is kind of a, you know, runs on the low level of uh, Drupal. And this is what we've done when we moved from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 and 9. We moved from, from the island of our own implementations of certain uh, internal components to using Symphony. And now we are always using that. And we have to uh, follow their version. Symphony for security coverage next year. Next year, yeah. Because they're Drupal 9. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I'm um, looking okay, scary. Well, yeah, we're going to talk about that in a second. Yeah. Um, so the good news is that for web server, no change, no significant changes. Database, no significant changes required. One uh, on the language level, one uh, eight point one. You need to run eight point one uh, to run Drupal ten. And uh, if you want still on Drupal nine, which most of us are. Uh, if you run 9.3 or above, you can already switch to 8.1 and be ready for Drupal 10. Uh, cool. Now, just 
quickly. So CPA is a five. Um, it is uh, replaced. It, it's a replacement for CPA to four, as I mentioned before. But CPA to four is available as a one chip. What that means is uh, you can get a triple nine side, and you can upgrade to triple ten. And if you have some configuration for CPA to four, you can install as a one chip module, and it's all will work straight away. So it's a drop-in kind of replacement. Uh, jQuery, jQuery UI. Uh, what is interesting about this one is if you use a module such as Bethlehem, that will it's like a dependency uh, tree. Uh, if you use something like Bethlehem, it actually depends on jQuery UI, which on its own depends on jQuery, and jQuery UI has to be um, uh, used as a separate function module. You, you may actually end up using multiple jQuery UI related modules because they all uh, been split into separate ones. You have jQuery UI calendar, jQuery UI autocomplete, and other ones. So um, just be aware of that. Um, sorry. And this is the interesting one. So I took 20, so actually two slides here, um, top 20 uh, modules and uh, to check whether they are <coughs> ready for Drupal 10. Interesting fact, it's actually two slides here. Um, interesting fact is that two months ago, uh, about 80% of these were not ready. Within two months, um, they all get ready, apart from two. So we've got Linkit, uh, and which doesn't have a patch, uh, and it actually doesn't work. We have that form, but sorry, uh, patch is available there. Hoping that form will be uh, ready. Other ones you can see, well, from my experience, I know I'm using them. almost all of these on every build, so they are Drupal 10 compatible, uh, which is good news. And uh, also the team, teams of function modules that work on this, so, you know, the last two months to get through. Uh, by the way, two months ago, uh, I was making some theme to be Drupal 10 compatible, and it took like four days to patch all the modules. Now it's all there, it's ready. So it's, it's great. Um, in within two months, such a great push by everyone. Um, what do we do? This is this is thing that if you are a developer here, remember or we'll check this out. It's a bit technical, maybe. But um, what happens if you want to use a country that is not, not Drupal 10 ready, but you happy to patch it. The thing is, uh, it just happened to be that because of the way uh, dependency resolution works in Drupal and Composer itself, the patch to apply to a module to make it compatible with Drupal 10 uh, requires like it to be compatible. So it's like um, a currency issue. Uh, to be the to be the problem, there is a special project called Composer Drupal. Linians, Linian, I think. And uh, if you run this code, you can actually take a Drupal 9 module, uh, run a couple of commands like this one. So, uh, Drupal token is version 1.10, was not compatible with uh, Drupal 10. But if you run this command, it actually can be made compatible, and this whole problem of dependency resolution will go away. Um, it actually took me some time to find this. It's not not that advertised how to do it. Um, it will save you a lot of time if you need to use a lot of Drupal 9 uh, modules in Drupal 10. Uh, you would not have to deal with every module one by one. You can just install this and uh, uh, use the patches as you need. Um, yes, so uh, if you all own Drupal 9, you can keep upgrading to uh, next and next version of Drupal 9 until you're ready to switch to Drupal 10. Uh, have until 2023. That's to, to your point. <laughs> this is where uh, you know, Symphony 4 EOL occurs, uh, 2023 November. Um, basically, almost a year from now on, job break. Now, that's all if you're 9. Hoping you are. <laughs> and if you are Um, 
if you are on seal interval 7, um, you can wait until 2023 November as well. Or you can start upgrading today. Um, is that you're gonna present a kill here? We're supposed to be talking about how to upgrade um, fast and efficient, I guess. Yeah, thank you. Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you again for um, coming today to the Melbourne Meetup. I'll be quick. I'm just going to give you a quick summary on the specific theme, uh, which is D10 ready. And uh, as Alfred alluded to, it's 100, 100 thousand hours, 10 years of Google work, and about 500 sites of culmination to build a civic theme. Do you want to wait for a second? Okay. Until everyone gets the So, for people playing at home, there's a bit of a quick food break. Just might start continuing. So, so why did we build Civic Theme? What was it like before Civic Theme? So we noticed that there was a lot of repeated waste and effort and time in solving the same design patterns for projects. There was a lot of repeated effort in also doing user research and a lot of money spent for every single project. And at the same time, there was a lot of work in accessibility, compliance, and testing for every single project uh, individually. Now, it's not that it's a waste of money, it's just that it was a repeated pattern that we were seeing. So we decided to come up with something that was across projects and across a design as well. So the design phase and the build phase. And that was Civic Theme. So Civic Theme creates engaging, inclusive, and consistent digital experiences very quickly. It's an open source, inclusive, and component-based design system created for governments and corporations to rapidly assemble modern, consistent, compliant digital experiences. So I'm just going to fly through some of the uh, benefits here. So we didn't build it from scratch. It was kind of using the, um, the if you if people know here, the old uh, Australian government design system. That was our base to build everything. So that was a tried and battle tested uh, design system and was decommissioned uh, September 21, about a year, a year and a bit ago. Um, but we had started working on it quite a bit earlier than that. And so that was a great base for us to actually build up from. So we used a lot of the common used components, looked at those, and then up uplifted the, many of those components to build our base uh, civic theme build. We then built each of the components individually. So they were actually individually standalone components, not just uh, a part of a big theme, but it looked at individually from accessibility, compliance, and usability, and UX point of view. We aimed to make uh, a lot of the components and assembly done from the admin UI within Drupal. So the assembly and management of the site is very quick um, and very low to no code. So making it much easier for content management and site management. And there you go, I mentioned, so no code. <laughs> Uh, very little code, so unless you're going to make drastic changes, you can actually manage the design, the layout, and even many of the component kind of fields uh, and mappings within the actual uh, Drupal admin UI. One of the other uh, features is that you can manage the colors through the site. So there's a interface there that shows you both uh, Storybook, which is now shipped also with Civic Theme, but also the uh, Atomic uh, Library and the Atomic Design System is actually built into the, um, the, the built into the uh, Drupal admin as well. So you can change colors on the fly and adjust all your styling as well. As I mentioned, it's a true design system. So we both have a, a Figma design library and design system that actually has a parity of all the build components as well. So what you see in Figma and design in Figma will actually be available out of the box within Civic Theme itself. And then we have a uh, theme implementation, which is a Drupal 10 version ready. It is open source, and so you can download uh, both the design system files within Figma and also the um, code as well. We've tested it against uh, WCAG 2.1 AA, 
and all the components out of the box meet this compliance will be tested for any changes as well every time there's a release. As I mentioned, there's a uh, component library with 40 plus components available out of the box as well, which you can adjust. And as we built the system, it was project led. So we worked with clients specifically, and as these requirements were coming out of the projects, we were able to bring them back in a specific theme where we found that they were common use um, requirements. We also ensure that we are following as many of the digital policies to make this actually accessible and usable by everyone. And just some of the stats to date. So specifically for the specific theme, we had about 18 months of work, 5,000 hours, uh, and we have uh, six uh, contributors, um, early contributors that help work with the project. And there are 60 components out of the box now. Although it says 1.3 there, I think we're up to version 1.4 already. Uh, and one point, sorry, yeah, 1 1.4 is about to come out, sorry. Yeah, about to come out. So looking forward, we're also looking at uh, Drupal 10 Ready. Uh, we're also looking at other um, uh, ways of working with uh, decoupled and other systems as well. <laughs> just a quick preview, I'm not going to demo this, but just a quick preview there. Uh, so this is Civic Theme, it's uh, just the theme part that you can see there. This particular version is a government version, but there are multiple um, uh, industry types that we've set up, and they all come out of the box as well to speed up the build. So you can go in there and adjust any of these just straight out of the box. And of course it's responsive. <laughs> so if you wanted to start working with Civic Theme, you can Work with the Figma design files or work with Drupal. It's up to you. It's also an open source product that's maturing, so it's not perfect. Uh, you can see there we've got a few different versions and there's a bit of a, a forward plan for what we need to get done as well. And if you're welcome to, uh, to see what it looks like online and contribute, there is the um, Figma library Component library and the Drupal theme. If you want any details, I can let you know what those are. But you can also head to civictheme.io to find out all those details. There's some other resources. I'm just going to skip that one. And just to kind of fill in the gaps there, so Civic Theme is an open source product. Um, at the moment, uh, Salsa is the main contributor and maintainer for um, the product for the base build. And as we grow the community, we'll be expecting and hoping that a lot more people will be able to contribute and build the product up. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>